What's good, YouTube? You know who it is. Chris Jones, representing Palm Chasers. So guys, been a while since I've given you a full workout video. I kinda want to wait till gyms open back up and all that good stuff. But man, the way the world is looking, the gyms are opening back up, then they're closing back again. I guess it's too much. I was like, fuck it, Chris Jones. Make the fucking videos you wanna make. If people can't join in, maybe they can just watch for motivational purposes or just save them for later, you know what I mean? Because waiting around for the world to be, to, to be fucking perfect just isn't going to cut it, all right? So I'm recording while I'm training chest today, and I thought I would record for you guys. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to start off with some pet flies. I decided that instead of doing the whole commentary thing, maybe walk you through some form cues as I train. Now keep in mind, this is not a form video. Watch out for the form videos, but I will throw in some form cues. That's why I got the music off in the background, and we're gonna walk you through it. This is my third set. I'm doing five sets of 12, all right? It's kinda like this. And like I said, I'm going to do form videos, but think about, oh, perfect example right here. Right? So think about this red band as the muscle, right? So what I do is, see how it's relaxed? I get it under tension. Right now, my muscle is under tension, right? Here it's relaxed. Right here, under tension. I feel the band pulling back. Now, I wanna go to contracted, back to the stressed position, but not to the relaxed position. So look, contract back to the stress position, not to relax. There's no more tension here. I want to get under tension, go to contraction, back to, to here. Contraction, back to here, but not under relaxed. I'm keeping it stressed. Contracted to stressed. Contracted to stressed. Kind of with a bicep curl. So I'm curling my arms, but I'm not coming here to where my elbow is locked out and relaxed. If I'm, if I'm on a machine curl or a cable curl, I stop about right here. That way I'm still under stress. So I'm still under stress right here. Here, I'm no longer stressed. So I keep it stressed, contract. Keep it stressed, contract. Keep it stressed, contract. Hope that answers a little bit of what I'm trying to explain. Got it here. And I squeeze. I'm still under stress, and I contract. Still under stress, contract. Still under stress, and contract. I'm constant tension. Contract. I got some problem with a little incline bench. Now the golden question, touch your chest or don't touch your chest? Guys, I just posted a video, what, a day or two ago? Go watch that video. Should you touch your chest or not? Lots of insight to give you some uh, more context on the topic, all right? Whatever you decide to do, just make sure you control that weight. <sighs> full range of motion, full control. Controlling the weight ensures your muscle receives the stress. If you're throwing the weight around, you lose tension, believe it or not. Yeah, baby. All right, guys, so if you're like me, you know, and you have to kind of humble yourself a little bit, you got tired of joint pain, you got tired of the back pain, no, nope. you feel me? You got tired of all that shit, and you have to lighten the weight, don't be discouraged, guys. The strength will eventually come back, all right? And guess what? Every rep is gonna be quality reps. No more, so, you know, look out for the next video. It's gonna be called, cause I don't wanna turn my videos into fucking, fucking rants. <laughs> Documentary. Yeah, exactly, turn this into documentaries. <laughs> Be looking, well, I'm gonna call the video something along the lines of why don't we do low reps? 
because it goes hand to hand. Why don't we do low reps and why form is so important? Just look out for the video. It's gonna, it's gonna open your eyes, okay? But yeah, don't be discouraged, guys. It's gonna take me a while to get back to where I used to be. And I'm cool with that. Every workout is fun. I'm noticing my strength is coming up. It's very exciting, all right? But 225, I was getting that bitch like for like three or four reps. Now I can get it for like six to eight. My goal is to hit 225 for sets of 12 to 15 and then start going up in weight the right way. No more bouncing it off my chest and, you know, throwing my ass off the seat, all that type of stuff. I even got headaches at first, like from all the straining and constantly controlling the weight, it gave me headaches the first couple of weeks. But now I don't get those headaches no more. I control the weight much better. Do not be discouraged. It's going to be a rough transition, but getting your form right is a must if you want longevity. I want to do this while I'm 50, 60, 70, 80. I want to be like one of these. How many guys, y'all seen those guys in the gym? They be hitting you. They, they'll come at you with old pictures of themselves. And they be like, you be like, who was that? Oh, that was me when I, no, motherfucker, what happened? Why did you fall off so bad? I'll tell you why this motherfucker fell off. He was trained with bad form, and he, he got tired of coming to the gym in pain, you know? Or maybe he was training too hard, and he just, he just got tired of all that overtraining. It, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people fall off. Some people fall off for the simple fact that they train in a way they don't enjoy. You know, when I notice I'm getting discouraged or I'm getting demotivated, I'll just do hippie workouts for a whole couple of weeks. I'll go to the gym and do like really easy, really light workouts and just enjoy the workouts for a while. I don't focus on going heavy. I don't focus on going to failure. I literally come to the gym and have, have me a nice pump and just enjoy my sessions because you get so caught up in trying to get better it work, workouts become a work, it become a job. Get back into loving it again. So the next movement I like to do for my upper pecs is pretty much some type of unilateral movement. Either I do dumbbells or I do hammer strength. Me personally, man, I'm not gonna lie, I like hammer strength. Uh, it's been a mental tug of war because all my life I've done dumbbells. But once you get to a certain strength level, let's say you can press the 120s or heavier guys, taking them dumbbells off the rack, carrying them to the seat, kicking them up, it's just a lot of work. You lose three reps just bringing them to the goddamn seat. Keep in mind, in bodybuilding guys, the rules are simple. You want to take your muscle from the origin point to the assertion point under resistance. Look, this is one point of the pec, right? Right here. The pec starts here and ends here. Or all the way around, starts here, end here, however way you want to look at it. But pretty much one point of assertion is right here along the sternum and the clavicle, right? And the other point is right here. And what I want to do I want to shorten it. Notice when I bring these two areas together, when I bring this area here and this area and bring them together, shortened it, look how the muscle look now. Now look how it is when you bring it away from each other. See how flat the muscle looks? Now look. You see that? So don't feel bad for using machines if it's more comfortable for you. Because at the end of the day, this chest right here, it doesn't care if I had to walk three miles to go get the dumbbells. It doesn't matter if I walk three steps to get those dumbbells or three miles to get those dumbbells. Only thing my chest care about is from here to here. How much stress, how much resistance can I create from going to here to here? So I'm gonna stick with the hammer strip. Now sometimes when I'm feeling good, my lower back feeling good, I'm feeling young, I might go throw up them dumbbells for the fuck of it. But for the most part, this is what I fuck with. All right? So come over here. Get out. Get set up. Put my shoulder blades together. See that? See my elbows? Tuck them in just a little bit. Now look. Squeeze, full control. 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 Squeeze, full control.
Squeeze, control, squeeze, control, squeeze, control it, squeeze. Add some more weight. Now, like I've said many times, there's three parts to a rep. You have the negative, you have the positive, and then you have the static, right? So, when it comes to the negative, I like to get negative stress from free weights. So, notice, I do incline barbell first. That way I can get my negative stress, right? Now, I'm still getting negative stress here, but the main focus here is to give me a good contraction and a good pause on the top. I wanna feel stress from the bottom all the way to the top, and I wanna pause at the top for a second to really give me a contraction. I already got me some really good negative stress. Same with biceps, guys, when I train biceps, I do either barbell curl or dumbbell curl, and I go as heavy as I can, and I'm contracting, of course, but my main goal is controlling that negative to get that real good negative negative stress and then I throw in some machines. Same with legs. Either I do some front squats or I do some trap bar deads to make my muscles go through the range of motion under negative stress and then of course I get those machines and contract my muscles. Because I honestly wholeheartedly believe you're not going to get the best bang for your buck doing all machines because yes they give you a great contraction, yes they give you a great static attraction on the top but the negative stress is not legit. It's not real. Do a fucking pull up. Go to a pull up with your body weight. Hold yourself up and then let yourself down with your body weight. Then go to a lat pull down machine. That shit don't even feel nowhere near the same, right? So I believe in getting your negative stress from free weights. I have to do at least one free weighting movement for all my body parts. And then of course I finish up with the machines. That was an exclusive tip, man. <laughs> That could have been a video all by itself. So I got three wheels on here. My goal is to eventually get to four wheels with the same form. No more throwing it around and all that shit. Squeeze, control, squeeze, control, squeeze, control, and pause. Control and pause. I said, guys, my goal is to get back to four wheels with that good crispy form, you feel me? I know y'all can tell now I'm looking extra thick right now, not looking lean like I was two weeks ago. Man, let me tell you something, man. When you stress the fuck out, man, when you are stressed, the, that, bo that bodybuilding shit don't be, now it's starting to make sense to me. Like, I've never been depressed before, thank God, but I've dealt with anxiety and panic attacks, which is like, uh, panic attacks, anxiety, they're all cousins in, in depression. They're all cousins. They're not the same people, but they're all, they all fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? And now it makes sense to me. I've had people that say, man, I, I got depressed and I stopped going to the gym. And I never understood that. I was like, shit, wouldn't going to the gym make it better? Not for everybody. Everybody's battles are different. Everybody copes with things differently. You're feeling better now? I look forward to getting back on track, back on my morning cardio again. This is pretty good considering I haven't tracked the macro in three weeks. I think I look all right. I 197 this morning. And uh, you know, I cannot wait to get back on track. I'm just taking my time, guys. I've been going through it men mentally, you know what I mean? And honestly, when you're going through it mentally, that bodybuilding shit, that six pack shit don't matter. It ha I haven't cared about abs in weeks. All right, so as you see, I had two pressing motions. One pressing motion to give me nice, heavy, negative stress on the pecs, and then I did a unilateral motion. Instead of a bilateral motion, I did a unilateral. Let each arm work by itself, and I make sure I contract the muscles under control. Now we're doing the isolation movements. I have to do two. Now, I'm gonna show you both, all right? Check it out. One, first and foremost, we need to understand the reason why we have isolation movements. Come over here real quick. Isolation movements for chest are crucial to reach your fullest potential. Now check this out right here, guys. Look, we already know, right? This is pretty much the assertion point, right up in here, or on the humerus bone, right where the bicep area is. Pretty much right up in here, right? We pretty much know and search one of the assertion points of the chest is pretty much right here, right? And then along the sternum. 
So if you want to shorten the muscle, try to get the humerus as close to the sternum as possible. This is where all the chest muscles is, right? So look, that's why when we do movements like flies, that's why flies work so well. Not because flies are such a great movement, they take the function of the muscle on the resistance. Look at this. I got the humerus area, the sternum area. And when I do this, there's nothing, right? But look, when I do this, look at that. That's why flies work so well for chest, right? You can build a great, great, great set of pecs with pressing. Obviously, when I'm pressing, you see the chest working. You see the chest working. Even though my humerus is way out here, you see the chest working. But look at it now. Come on, you can't ignore that. You can't ignore that. You need both presses and isolation. So that's why exercises like cable crossovers work so well. You see the humerus, get close to the sternum, you're gonna get in the lower part of the chest. See that? The lower part of the chest. Now look at this, even though my lower part of my chest is contracted from doing the uh, cable crossover, look at this. See how soft this shit looks? You see how soft my chest looks? Now look. You see the difference? Look at this, cable crossover. Lower pecs are nice and contracted. Now look at this. You see how hard and shortened it got? That's why I always preach angles, guys. Angles. Do some, do some crossovers like this. Do some peg flies like this, right? Do some shit like this. Get all those angles. Take the humerus to the sternum from different angles. Go to this angle. Humerus sternum. Then go to this angle. Humerus sternum. Then go to this angle. Humerus sternum. Hit three angles for your chest when doing isolation movements. That's why. You want the complete development. Don't leave any stones unturned. The purpose of a bodybuilder is to stimulate as many fibers in that muscle group as possible. And that's why isolation movements are so important for chest. That's the one movement that truly gives you the best contraction under resistance. Unfortunately, only one joint is involved, which is the shoulder. So the amount of weight you can use is very limited. That's why we have heavy compound movements. We have heavy compound movements to really exhaust as many fibers as we possibly can. Then we take these isolation movements and we clean things up. We try to reach as many fibers as we can. You know, those fibers that are really hard to reach. There's no way you're gonna get deep up in here if you're doing a barbell bench. I'm doing a barbell bench and my hands are way out here. How am I gonna get this? I have to do some kind of motion to where things come in. That's why isolation movements are so good. So I have to do personally, I have to do two different flying variations for my upper chest for that very reason, right? I'm gonna do one motion where I start here, arms out to my sides, I come up, 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 slightly in below my chin. So I stretch and I go in below my chin. Stretch and I go in below my chin. Stretch, go in below my chin. And I keep that constant tension. I stretch and I squeeze. I come down, but I keep this tension. I don't come way back here and lose my tension. I keep my tension, squeeze. Keep my tension, squeeze. Keep my tension, squeeze, all right? I do two, sometimes three sets of that to complete failure. Then I come up. And I, like, I do a little T-shaped fly. And I've never shared this in a program, and I've never mm. shared this on video, because I feel like it's kind of advanced. It's advanced meaning the chance of injury is high if you're not careful. You know, this is a very compromising, awkward position to put your shoulders in, that T-shape, right? And if you jerk, or if you come down too fast, you can really cause some shoulder problems. So. That's why I'm really skeptical of people using it, but if you have good control form, you have nothing to worry about, right? So, come up like a T-shape, right? See that? And I can literally feel the upper pec stretch. I can also feel my front delt engaged. So look, I get tension on my chest. Here, there's no tension. I got tension on my chest, and I pretty much come under control, Focusing on my upper chest, and I squeeze right in that upper chest, right over them where them clavicles are. And I squeeze, and then I come back under control. Don't lose tension. See here, I lost tension. Don't come far back. Keep the tension right there. I squeeze, 
come back, stretch, while keeping tension, and I go again. I come back, stretch, I feel under tension, and I squeeze and I paw, and I stay focused. I stay focused on that upper chest. Focus, 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 and I squeeze, don't forget, pause, and I pause. Bringing that humerus across to that sternum. Uh, under resistance the whole time, full control. So those are the two pressing motions I do, and those are the two flying motions that I do for upper chest. Don't forget the lower chest. If you enjoyed this video, comment below. I should show you the whole routine. The reason why this video was so long is because obviously I talk too much. And if you have a problem with that, don't watch me. This is my passion. Let me be great. This is what I like to do. I like to give people insight. I could easily just show you a video, hey guys, three sets of 10, four sets of 10. I like to show you how to do it and I like to explain to you why the fuck you should do it. Oh yeah, one more thing guys. New launch, late July. I'm aiming for July 25th. We got um, items you can go out in. Everything's closed, but items you can go out <laughs> in. We got new cutoffs. Dope shit coming. Be sure to support the launch. This is the first launch in months. All right? Don't forget to like my shit. Comment, subscribe. Hop back at you.